Well, the tension resulting from the Saudi oil attack could put pressure on Fed Chair Jerome Powell. Tomorrow, we will get the September Fed meeting, and everyone is still expecting a rate cut. The question is, by how much? We've got our Fed correspondent, Brian Chung, here on the couches to tee things up for tomorrow. Big day for you tomorrow, Chung. Big day, of course, for everyone, for the markets. Uh, so do you think that there will be an impact from the oil story on what Jay Powell does? Well, the oil story, but also it's just been a really long six weeks. I feel like I've yeah. aged. I've gotten so many wrinkles on my face oh. from the last six weeks since the Fed uh, on July 31st cut rates for the first time in over 10 years. Keep in mind, since that meeting, actually only a few days after that meeting, the U.S. labeled China a currency manipulator because the yuan to USD spiked above seven for uh, the first time in quite a while. We also saw that there were retaliatory tariffs that mm -hmm. were put into place. Um, there was the yield curve inversion for the first time uh, in the two and the ten space. And then a couple more times. And then a couple more times. I mean, a lot has happened since that time. It's weird to look at the Fed funds futures contracts, though. Right now, about a two-thirds chance of a 25 basis point cut based on these contracts and a one-third chance of actually no cut. But what we're kind of seeing is actually that one third chance of no cut is actually a bit overstated because the way that the contracts kind of work, it's actually factoring in almost too much the rise in yields that mm -hmm. have happened basically since the beginning of this month. Uh, really, everyone on Wall Street is saying we expect 25 basis points in that meeting tomorrow. So no one's still talking about, say, 50 basis points, which for a minute there, that was what you heard some cheers for oh. in the aftermath <laughs> of the previous cut. There actually are still some people calling for 50 okay. basis points, one actually being a voter. So St. Louis Fed President James Bullard has called for 50 basis points. He has has actually been one of the more dovish members of this current uh, voting FOMC committee. Uh, he is someone that has called actually for 50 basis points in the past, so it's unlikely that his the kind of you know viewpoint will actually sway the rest of the committee. But when you consider that right now, this is a Fed that's kind of got a big rift in it right now, right? I mean, we saw there were two dissents in the decision in July 31st from Eric Rosengren in Boston, also Kansas City's uh, Esther George, saying they actually would prefer no rate change at all in that last meeting. So there's a wide range of ideas, and a lot of that is because of just how much noise there is out there. It's not just a story about where the U.S. economy is right now. The consumer still looks strong. GDP is still largely on pace. But when we look at all the geopolitical concerns, one of them being the Saudi Arabian issue that we saw this weekend, there's a lot of looming clouds over whether or not the Fed should pursue what they call another insurance cut to kind of hedge against any sort of negative impacts that could be down the road. Well, and I think you mentioned the changes since July 31st. I think one of the biggest ones that really hasn't been getting enough attention is that spike in inflation, right? CPI, which is not the Fed's preferred gauge, but it still was indicative of, of a lack of a need to cut rates if you already have some inflation. Do you think that will weigh in uh, on any of the decisions that we'll get tomorrow? Yeah, that's a good point that you bring up. I mean, CPI has just been one reading domestically of how things in the U.S. have looked pretty much all right. I mean, the last uh, updated numbers that we got on personal consumption show that actually consumption rates have been the best it's been in the past few years. So, I mean, the U.S. economony is still looking good. We've heard that echoed oh, uh, no by recession. Jay Powell. Well, Jay Powell Great. said that directly in his speech in Switzerland uh, about a week, a week and a half ago. He was saying, I don't think that a recession is the story for the U.S. or the global economy right now. But when we talk about all these other political issues, these are things that we kind of have yet to see in the economic data. I mean, the issue that we're seeing in Saudi Arabia with the potential spike in oil prices and what kind of ripple effect that'll do for geopolitical instability in that whole region remains to be seen. That just happened over this weekend. So when we talk about the Fed, they've been saying they've been data dependent for the first half of this year. But we need to keep in mind that the reason why they did that insurance cut in the first place in July had nothing to do necessarily with the data. It's about them trying to hedge against the impacts of these geopolitical risks kind of coming into fruition at the later part of this year. And things categorically since that last meeting appear to have gotten worse. So I'm wondering, because obviously for the for September, this rate cut is essentially a foregone conclusion. But what are the whispers we're already hearing about December? Mm, December, yeah. Well, I mean, we're getting a new round of dot plot projections. So dot keep in mind, this is uh, what you know the Federal Reserve, they call the summary of economic projections. They do this every other meeting. So we didn't get it in July. We did get it in June. And this is kind of a, a roadmap, if you will, of where policymakers see rates going by the end of this year, even through the end of 2020. And uh, what we kind of expect to see in those dot plot projections is that the revisions will be downwards. Uh, these policymakers will probably say that they could see a case for another 25 right. basis point rate cut in December. And the Wall, and Wall Street is basically saying they are expecting probably one more rate cut for a total of three rate cuts for 2019 as a result of all these changes. And for those of you that are saying maybe, hey, this is an acknowledgement that the Fed is trying to steer away from recession. I mean, the Fed wants this to happen. They want to steer away from it and engineer what they call a soft landing, as they did in 1995. 1995, they had three rate cuts, even though markets were at near all time highs at that point in time because they wanted to steer away from recession, yep. which they ultimately did until the dot-com bubble ended up popping in the mm. early 2000s. Right.
Pets.com, puppet. Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace. Okay, Chung, thanks so much. Yep. We'll check back in with you soon. Going to be a big day for you tomorrow. Yeah, should be fun. YahooFinance.com. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.